Hello, I think you're probably going to be wondering again what this is about but something I've never really thought about doing because I take so many things for granted that I have done and I just looked upon these things earlier and thought about uh, a good friend of mine who used to say that everything in my home was like a piece of art kind of taking that William Morris ethos of it's either got to be beautiful or useful so everything everywhere <laughs> probably to the point of too much for a lot of people there are things but not just material objects that that are just uh, I don't know stuff you've bought or whatever but these are found things over many years that have come from many places and what I'm going to just briefly talk about is just the arrangement of them because I take it for granted that what I do is just natural to everybody and that's what they would do with some found objects but it is not necessarily so is it so I just thought maybe just a little, little look at these things because like the screwdriver video if I say screwdriver am I going to get some more rude comments underneath I don't know don't know whether it was because I was saying things like screwdriver and prong or whether it was because the picture of the screwdriver looked so kind of suggestive that I attracted these comments anyway what was I saying Yes, it's not going to be kind of in that vein. Uh, I lost the track of what I was saying about the screwdriver then, but it, it's it, of, of the same ilk that finding the beauty in these things, but it was much easier to see them because they are probably, to most people, much more aesthetically pleasing than a rusty old prongy thing that I found outside the back door. So this particular bowl is a very beautiful bowl. It's kind of copper glass with gold. I was going to leave it empty and then build it up and show you how I did it, but then that would have been too awkward with my hands and holding the camera. So I've laid them out as I find it pleasing. And I think the important thing, if you're going to do this, and I'm not treating you like some sort of imbecile that can't work this out for yourself. I'm just saying if you need a bit of inspiration and you're going to do this and you have some a collection of your own of finds that you find beautiful and you just kind of leave them maybe in a box or scattered around and you don't quite know how to place them together, then this might give you some sort of uh, ideas or, or, the, or the, um, the will to go and do something with them of your own. And obviously there are infinite varieties of, of the way you can organise these things, but this is how I've chosen to do it for now. And the most important thing I find is the contrast between colour and texture. Now, there are very much in this, there are some very sculptural things. Some are almost like a Henry Moore. If you can see this one, I've got my plastic gloves on again. Uh, this one here is like almost like a Henry Moore found sculpture. It's like a bean shaped thing. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Um, and then there's this crazy hold stone that is just just like could be if that was sort of massive and on a plinth, it would be. Like maybe that's Barbara Hepworth or something. <laughs> but these these things are just just lying there, shaped by time and tide again, and and. When you put them together, they become just extraordinary pieces of art, I think. And my friend confirmed that, although I do tend to sort of... Um, it's just what I do, you see. So it, does, it doesn't sort of make me feel like I've done something particularly outstanding. It's just because it's just what I do. I just put things together. But the, the theme here, if you've, you won't be able to see this very clearly. You've got this beautiful pink stone with a white line down it. I think it might be called a serpentine or serpentine stone. Probably a lot of these things came from Cornwall or Kirinau, however you pronounce it, West Penwith area, uh, which I love with all my heart and haven't seen for many years. Anyway, many of these came from there, especially the ones with the stripes. So there's a contrast between them. That, that is an absolutely beautiful dusty pink colour, as is this one here. 
you can see it. So you contrast, what will contrast with that so beautifully is a piece of sort of sea green sea glass. And then there is this most extraordinarily wonderful stone that I'm focusing on dead centre, which has got that same sea green contrasting with a kind of copper colour and these navy blue striations on it that look, if you made that into a painting, that would be the most incredibly evocative abstract painting. And yet it is this tiny little stone. It's got these crosses and just scribbles almost of dark blue on it. And it, it's, it's exquisite. It is just a piece of beautiful natural art. And next to it is one that is almost as gorgeous. I have to just move the edge of the way a little bit, which has an almost lavender hue to it. And again, these little speckles of this sort of dark slaty blue. So if you place the the sea glass and the turquoisey, very duck, no, it's not turquoise, it's more duck egg colour next to the pink, you get quite a striking combination, even though they're both they're both stone, well the sea glass isn't obviously, but they're both stone, but together the colour brings out something between the both of them. But as I said, it's colour and texture, so you want to be blending your your things together and not putting too many of the same shapes or the same textures together. This is a, a marvellous piece of driftwood that just is very tactile you want you want to be holding that and looking into it that there i find little worlds and all these things they're so i mean they're so easy to walk past and yet when you when you study them when you when you bring them into your home which obviously you shouldn't be doing in the sack load these are selected items over many years of gathering one here and one there i don't just grab a handful and leg it or if i was able to leg it it's it's a careful collecting over decades really and then they come together so right at the bottom underneath everything you have a piece of cornish granite which contrasts nicely with the less like the the white almost heart shaped very smooth almost pearlescent stone that's on top of it and then to contrast again with them, you've got this twisted piece of bark that goes right across the whole design. I am going to call it a design because that's what it is. And then I added in a string of sea glass beads just going along the edge that pick up all the colours that you find within the actual little world, little circular world of marvels there and you can add in just very small pieces of texture there's a tiny little piece of seagrass there that just just enhances things because of the contrast and again it becomes like something that i would look at if that was if that was a canvas with just the plain pink with the white streak and then this spiky shape on it it would be a lovely abstract it is a, it is a I'm probably whiffly waffling to people who don't have any sort of interest or sense in creating something artistic. Perhaps you're looking at my channel just purely because of the tarot aspect of it and you're not that interested in the art aspect of it. So this is for people who are interested in colour and shape and line and texture and all of those things and also in just perhaps having their eyes opened to what they may find themselves and thinking how they could arrange it. It's almost like um, there's lots of mudlarking channels on YouTube now, some of which are wonderful. There's a lady called Nicola who does lovely videos, very, very popular. You have to have a license to be a, a mudlark, a ludmark, I was going to say. <laughs> That's quite good. In, in, um, on the banks of the Thames now because there are so many people wanting to do it but it, it almost it reminds me of how how she treasures these tiny little things and she brings them home with her again it's a bit like bagpuss you know and you get these things and you bring them home and you polish them up and you think what was their history where did they come from what in the case of these things obviously they've just been shaped by by the weather and by the action of water and 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 so forth but 
they still have their own journeys, their own little things. And I feel, sometimes I feel bad because, you know, these are not animate beings, but I have no right to say that they are not, haven't got their own sentience and I sometimes feel bad about lifting them from where they are and I did usually ask if it was okay and quite often I would put things back because I knew it wasn't okay at all to do so. Anyway we've said for 10 minutes I've talked about a bowl of random what what would be random but together they become cohesive I think. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. And I do say things for a very long time. Lovely Carla said that she likes listening to my voice because it's soothing. <laughs> I just wonder what I say is actually worth listening to as well. But anyway, as long as I'm serving a kind of purpose as being a, so a soother, that's good too. Now, this one is not so successful. I love this one. This is perfect. I love, <laughs> I am happy with this. Not something that happens very often in my existence that I'm happy with something entirely and of course it can be moved around but as it stands that is good now again this one is not i would not say this is finished this is a collection there are lots of holy stones here and again there's a piece of sea uh duck egg duck egg pottery there is a feather there is a very smooth piece of driftwood there is a fluorite crystal and there are these marvelous kind of abstract designed pebbles which are just wonderful now i'm not that this this is a is a nice collection but it's not an art artfully arranged one i think it's important what you put them in as well so the gold of the bowl and in the case of this one the kind of if you can see this it's kind of copper striated with gold that all kind of adds you have, it's important what you place them in so that they, it sets them off but I don't think that one is particularly, that one is not done. It is just a nice bowl of things at the moment. This one is a pleasing and sort of art piece, I would say. I think I can say that. Right, I'm going to now just do a very quick zizzle across the room, which means the camera will be blurring and showing my feet probably, just because I wanted to add this bit in before I close, because clothes clothes because this is going to be a short video oh before i leave on this one i you can even add in things like there is a beech nut casing beech mast there's a small piece of what i think is bone there and there's a piece of sort of very thin sculptural grass or stem of something all sorts of things can be brought together and you just need to spend time with them and have an eye for how things work colour wise and all the rest of the things I've already said. Let's just reel over here. So I've put these here because they're not normally here but I've put these here just because you can see them. I also have made these things things with um with think found objects these are my these are my driftwood hangy sculpture things can't really get to, can't do a lot of lot, uh you can't see a lot anyway you can see how i've done it basically you have the the lovely bent twisty gnarly wood wrapped with brown twine and then these four very very they have a great personality i think this is what i mean about things being having their own sentience there is a sense of presence about it all four of those things it's almost like they don't want to be particularly near each other the way they're hanging at the moment but they're all very different and again if that was in a gallery i think it, it would become an artful thing i'm not i wasn't doing it for that purpose i was just doing it purely for the love of it this is another one now this is the most extraordinarily fantastic piece of bark. What is this? This is the thing that's holding it up with the beautiful white feather. It's just like, I don't, it reminds me of something, but I don't know. It's like a polka dot thing there. I'm sure, sorry, I haven't closed my back door properly and it's banging a bit in the wind. So excuse the noises off there. Now there's this. Now, 
This piece of, of driftwood I thought was like an extraordinary pterodactyl creature or fossilised, uh, what do you call it? Um, not fossilised when it's turned to when it's turned to stone. Begins with a P. Oh, for goodness sake, brain. Uh, yes, it's that. It looks like it's. Um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue there, and I can't get it. Anyway, this looks like the most fabulous creature, doesn't it? An ancient piece. Oh, now you can hear a siren. The ubiquitous sound of this place is a siren. Uh, anyway, let's look at him. Uh, he's just, it's just that, it, that to me is, is, why can I not think of that word? You're going to be screaming it at me on, on, the, uh, it's, it's, it's a, uh, when something has turned to stone. Anyway, this is wood and I just, there is its large eye, like an ichthyosaur in a museum or a pterodactyl, I don't know, something of that ilk. I was just delighted to find and then we have the next layer which is another hold stone I'm leaning on my knees here so it's going to be a bit wobbly it just shows you what else you can do with the things that you find there we go just try and come out a bit there he really is fabulous though and then there's, I just think these things are wonderful 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 things does that give you any ideas? Or do you find these a bit creepy? I remember when I was trying to um, get a house swap at one point and I had these things hanging up all over the place because there are more. There are lots more of these. I just couldn't stop once I started doing it. But I mean, I didn't, as I said, I didn't go around pillaging, pillaging beaches and things. It was, it was a, you know, my, part of my journey that I would find things as I went along and then I would make them. But I did get a little bit obsessed about the making part. Um, yes, I, I had all these things hanging up when I was trying to get a house swap. And <laughs> also when I was trying to sell house, a house, this house particularly, that's another story. Um, and they were hanging up and I thought, now to me, this is art and it's beautiful and it's natural and it's sculptural and it has no threatening aspect at all but then I was thinking about other people coming in and going oh god Blair Witch which probably dates me but you know those kind of fetishistic things hanging up in the wood <laughs> and thinking what have I come into I do not want this house no matter how much I like it because this person practices dark arts and hangs things up which normal people don't, you see. They have normal things from Ikea or somewhere and I don't have those. I have these. So I, I took them all down and put them in a box and then when I came to take them out, they were all tangled together. So I lost a little bit of, of some of them, but these, these are a small example of, of what's left. And um, yeah, I can understand why somebody might think, uh, mm, yep what's going on there that's a little bit kind of ritualistic or or just plain mad why would you want that hanging up in your house when you could have something nice and shiny that you've bought why would you want this kind of grotty out things from outside ew with bits of twine and so forth i don't know it's kind of it's the wild spirit isn't it it's the wild wild spirit art found wild spirit art that just comes together because you're looking you're looking you're looking at what is around you and not looking at your phone and you're spending time getting into the beauty of the textures and the different the contrast between them and when they're actually hanging up properly then they're moving as well so god that would have freaked some people out wouldn't it when they came to look at my places and with a view to having them oh god yeah, there's these kind of moving fetishes above my head run away <sighs> i have to try and think like other people sometimes and it's not very easy to be honest <laughs> because i don't um maybe you'd find these quite horrifying in your home too i don't know i don't know i can only speak for myself and show you the sort of things that I have been doing and that I overlook and that I, I, you know, that I think I just, well, everybody would do that, wouldn't they? Well, no, they wouldn't and they might not think of it. 
So it's a kind of an encouragement to do it yourself. It's like do it yourself things. Not not even with an you know, okay, fine, sell them, give them away or whatever, but just for yourself, for your own pleasure, for your own aesthetic enjoyment, you can make wonderful things that have no evil ritualistic uh, dark magic ah no i'm sure the, the the cunning man the cunning cunning spirit the magical spirit he would like these i'm sure he would hang his hang his hut with these anyway that's enough isn't it 20 minutes 20 minutes of, of i hope it had some worth if the screwdriver one got that many views, then maybe this one will. But then maybe the screwdriver one only got so many views because people were waiting for the rude bit. Which will never come in one of my videos, clearly. Anyway, toodle pip, lots of love. Stay free and enjoy finding and making. But make sure that you are taking what it is okay to take. Would be my little bit of advice.